Hi everyone, welcome to our presentation, the final season, uh, where we're gonna talk about essentially how school counselors can help student athletes prepare for a time when they're no longer competing. So with that being said, let me introduce me and my colleagues or my colleagues and I. My name is Josh Mangin. I'm a mental health counselor located in Gorham, Maine. I have a private practice called Mainly Counseling and I will segue to Bex. All right, thanks Josh. Um... Like you said, my name is Bex, but um, I go by Rebecca Edelman as well. I am a doctoral candidate at the University of Wyoming with a school counseling background and do a lot of my research on school counselor identity um, and kind of how we can support students. Um, I also work clinically with student athletes and have some experience with that. And so now I'll segue it down to Andrew. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my name is Andrew Sutherland. I am a doctoral candidate at the University of Wyoming. I'm also a community-based counselor here in Laramie, Wyoming. Um, I have experience working with college student athletes and uh, my research focus has been on counseling student athletes. So now I'm going to move on to kind of the, the purpose of this presentation today on what we're talking about. Um, and so there we go. So for this presentation, we're going to look at an understanding of the psychosocial benefits that come from sports um, whenever students engage in sports. Along with that, we're going to also talk about um, you know, how we're informed that, counts, that athletes who can no longer compete, they may experience some mental health concerns. We're also going to increase the, your awareness and provide education on possible ways you can help athletes transition to post-competition phase of life. We're also, we will also explore ways in which school counselors and other relevant professionals can collaborate and provide resources and support to help students throughout and after their athletic careers. So first, looking at the psychosocial benefits that come from sports, there's a number of areas I think are important to touch on. Um, so first, sports gives a lot of students a sense of meaning and purpose in life. And so when we look at students from K through 12, um, a lot of them are still kind of developing sort of who they are and also understanding of maybe what they're looking for in life and what life's about. And so sports can provide a sense of meaning and purpose in that. Um, it also gives us great opportunity for students to improve their own self-esteem whenever they're having to face ch challenges athletically and work in teams and face competition weekly. Um, those skills kind of, they start translating into this development of who they are in the world. And that really can help build self-esteem. Um, that also comes with that personal growth and transformation that comes from getting better at a skill, getting better athletically. Uh, maybe that's something that they're not so comfortable academically, they're not doing well, but maybe they find that athletically they can really uh, use their talents in a different way. And so that kind of lets them transform who they are and allows that personal growth side as well. Uh, social support's a huge part of sports. Uh, we talk a lot about teams and team dynamics and things like that. And so whenever students, when they're young, they get a chance to really uh, collaborate with different people, peers in a different way than maybe in class or on a playground, but in a sort of more uniform setting where they're getting to work together on developing their team dynamics as well as their skill set to help in competition. Uh, and I think of that as well as, you know, I think of a lot of, in my own life, being an athlete where, you know, early on, all of my early friends were always from team sports, uh, on the soccer field or on the baseball diamond, you know, those kind of things. There's also a social and psychological skill development that takes place whenever um, students engage in sports. So again, thinking about how we learn to communicate with people differently, how we learn to relate to our teammates, um, as well as even teams that we're playing against, how we can develop relationships with people across from different comp comp uh, competitions. And then also the psychological development that comes from facing failures. How do we overcome kind of that and develop those skills of resilience in the face of adversity? And those are some important skills that I think a lot of um, young athletes get to learn. There's also an opportunity for career direction when we think about particularly high school students, athletes. Um, there might be some that are interested in playing at the college level, which brings some ac academic um, sort of uh, different directions that might involve. We would also think about the different skills that students might learn whenever they play in sports. They have to learn how to uh, engage in a team, work with others, how they can manage their time, and how to learn to be reliable with each other. Uh, those are important skills that can really relate to really any career. And so I think it's about finding how these different uh, benefits that come from sports can help students after they're done competing. And so that's what we're gonna talk about next. Go uh, down, there we go. So competition to post-competition. This is a difficult transition for a lot of uh, athletes, whether they be junior high athletes, high school athletes, college athletes, or even professionals. Eventually there will be a day where they're not competing anymore. Uh, maybe that's at 18, maybe that's at 40. But either way, it's going to come to an end. And I think it's important for us as school counselors to know how can we best support these students whenever they're facing sort of the loss 
of competition in their lives. I think a big part of this too is athletic identity. A lot of athletes start off really young. It becomes who they are. They're kind of almost conditioned based on their skill set of who they are. They, maybe they have friends that see them as the athletes, family members that come to their games. And so whenever they lose that, there comes with it a lot of challenges. Um, one, I mean, there could be the physical setback of not being able to work out every day. There might be the, the social aspect of, wow, I don't have this, an event that I go to every week where people are out there rooting for me. And so that could be challenging for a lot of students. So as a counselor, I like to think about that as sort of the loss and a lot of the grief that comes with that whenever you think about that transition away from sports. Um, and it's not, so, it, it's, uh, it's not uncommon in post-competition com, uh, to see mental health concerns. This is where we see a lot of students experiencing depression from the loss that they have, anxiety about what life looks like beyond sports when they don't have that athletic identity. So as counselors, I think it's important that we have some level of awareness of what's going on so we can better support these students. And I'll pass it on to, uh, I believe, Bex now. Yep. There we go. All right, thank y'all. Um, so as school counselors, we have a really unique role. We're really situated in a great spot to have an influence with students and work with them to help develop skills. And, you know, as we really quickly look at some of the major ASCA standards, right, how does this and these standards tie into sport, right? And performance and then transitioning into post-competition life, right? So our job as school counselors are to support student development um, and really give them a space where they feel safe um, and support them regardless of their athletic ability. So wanting to transition that, like, hey, just because you are in post-competition phase of life, one, does not mean you don't still hold an identity as an athlete, but two, also means you have value beyond just that piece of who you are. So really supporting that student development and identity cultivation. Next is confidentiality. And this is where it gets really challenging as a, you know, a school person, right? Um, a lot of times you might be the coach or you might have lunch with the coach or, you know, they might come in your office. So knowing that there is some role duality and how do we navigate that? Um, and that looks different based on each school um, and your own role within that school. Next, um, our jobs are to prepare them for academic career and social and emotional development. So how do we use pieces of student athletes and their training and their dedication and their work as an athlete and then transition that into that post-competition phase of life? So thinking about how does the work ethic, the motivation, the passion transition into a forever life skill? Um, also group work, right? So wanting to support student athletes, it's actually pretty common for students to transition into a post-competition phase of life um, in high school and around getting ready to transition into college. And so how do we do group work to support and foster those pieces um, and encourage growth? And then also knowing that we might be working with underserved and at-risk populations and a lot of times that is still representative in our student athlete population. Um, and if we could go to the next slide, please, Josh. Thank you. There we go. Um, so some of the pros and cons, right? Um, student athletes experience a lot of trauma. And as a counselor um, who works with student athletes and works in elementary schools and works with students, there's trauma is prevalent and specifically for individuals who, of color. Um, black males participation um, only garners a significant positive effect um, until their junior, var junior varsity level. So anything higher than that, it's actually taking away from their academic previs. Um, and what that means is as school counselors, we need to provide an environment where that post-competition life transitions um, and creates a space that still fosters academic success. Um, finding identity beyond just being a basketball player or a footballer or a softball player or a track runner, right? But being able to increase that academic success and putting that emphasis as educators um, and school counselors on that piece of like, okay, how can we make this valuable for you? And how can this become a life skill? Um, at what point are you becoming a service to the school and are we giving a service to you? Um, so really focusing on really just that intention um, between athletics and academics. Um, and the next transfer of educational endeavors during post-competition, right? So really thinking about like, hey, what do you want to do next? What does that look like? This is not the end, right? Um, and a lot of that goes based on situation to situation. And, and if the student athlete had a decision in whether or not they are or no longer are an athlete, right? Um, so we can go to that next slide, Josh. 
Here we go. Yep. And um, so ask school counselors, if we look back at those ASCA standards and based on some of the information that Andrew shared before, we really have to remember that like identity development is a huge part of what we do. Um, and athletics has their own unique individual culture that impacts identity development. Um, a lot of times do we do what our team needs? There's that pack mentality. So what is best for our team? Um, what is best for us individually? And how do we all succeed together? Um, and then knowing that the culture can be really positive and it can create all those amazing things that Andrew talked about, like fourth ethnic and or work ethnic and um, work ethics. Sorry, words are hard today. Um, and you know, creating a space where students are motivated. And then at the same time, it can also create really heavy amounts of pressure and stress, um, especially if you are an exceptionally well-versed athlete and you're excelling. There's a lot of pressure to carry your team, a lot of pressure from coaches, from parents to be a certain way and potentially pick sport as the rest of your life when you might not even know what that is yet. So as school counselors, it's our job to provide a space to support that identity. Um, development, but then also remember what happens if you're the coach or your spouse is the coach or you eat lunch on Tuesdays with the coach, right? Knowing that your role might be a little tainted in that athlete's eyes. So how do you allow them to know that there is autonomy and anonymity and that you are there for them to support them? Um, and I think too, being able to explore who they are beyond just an athlete. Being an athlete is a powerful thing. You know, I was an athlete most of my life until I got right before college and it shaped a big part of who I am. Um, but knowing that there's more to a person than just that title, right? It's a big part. Um, and as you transition into post-competition, it doesn't mean you have to stop being an athlete, right? Um, but how do you hold on to that? And then really being aware of the cultural backgrounds of students um, and what that means. Um, is there pressure from their family? Is there pressure from, you know, a religious standpoint, from a cultural standpoint? Is the community really rooting them on, but maybe they're afraid to let the community down, right? Um, and then additionally, we have to really look into who made the choice for students not to be in a sport anymore. Um, why did they transition into post-competition phase of life? Um, was it an injury? Was it just they got cut? They weren't ready for that next level. Um, was it academics? Was it a personal choice that they felt this wasn't the route for them? Because um, all of that is a big indicator of what that transition will look like and how to transition into that post-competition phase. And so the big question as a school counselor to ask our students is, okay, what's next, right? How do we hold on to this? How do we support that grief and loss that Andrew spoke about? And then take those steps forward and proceed to what's next, what's going to fulfill you, what's going to give you meaning and purpose. And just because you're in post-competition phase does not mean you lose your identity as an athlete or have to leave athletics as a whole, knowing that there's a lot of career development opportunities within athletics. All right, and I'll hand it off to Josh. Okay, so, sorry, oh, here we go. So ways as school counselors, we can help kind of address and support our athletes as they kind of transition to no longer competing. So again, as school counselors, you're in a great position to kind of be preventative as well as prepare the students for there's a time in their life when they're no longer able to compete. So that's a great way to kind of build skills and also develop some sort of plan, could be career plan, could be psychosocial, and just preparing them for the next phases of their life. So the next few slides, what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore the benefits that sports provide because if Andrew and Becca have mentioned, there's, there can be definitely some benefits that we want to find those core themes and then find other avenues in their life sphere to uh, influence those core themes. We also wanna explore, practice and develop skills that are gonna help with that transition. And again, we want still that social support. So explore ways to still feel connected to sports. So a possible intervention, um, to possibly a possible intervention that school counselors could use is we want to find the core themes to why students partake in these sports activities. So one of this, this way is to have a question or a conversation where you're gonna have your student describe their sport activities without using sports jargon. So let's say they, engulf, they, they engage in golf. So without describing golf, they may talk about the idea of precision, 
having some sort of relaxation or the importance of being in the moment. There also may be some sort of goal that they're striving for. So we really want to find the core themes. So if we can find the core themes, the skills and the emotions that are important to that student, then we can use kind of our own knowledge and expertise to find a way we could possibly have those core themes, skills and emotions match to other activities. So that could be career direction related. It could also be possible major. It could also be exploring other hobbies where those so similar key themes are explored and addressed. So if someone likes working in a team, then if they're going to transition to post-competition, it would be beneficial possibly to find other team activities that this student can engage in. So again, to really sum up what I'm trying to say here is we can explore the, the core benefits students get out of them remove all the sports jargon, get down to the real nitty gritty, and with that knowledge apply for other avenues the student can engage in. So the next slide is this idea of ways to feel connected. So for some athletes or for some student athletes, it may be beneficial for them to still have some sort of sense of connection. So when working with student athletes, it's not uncommon for them to still have this dream of whether going on to the next level be college professional sports, it may be getting involved in coaching or refereeing, or maybe it's in an adjacent field of sports, whether it be sports medicine, like a physical therapist or athletic trainer. So we kind of, some athletes are gonna benefit from still having a sense of connection. But it's important to know that because as Becca alluded to, there can be past traumas, or there could be other concerns that the, the students engaging, some may choose not to have a connection once they are entering that post-competition phase of life. So from my experience, when I could no longer play football because of injury, there was a time where I could not watch football because it was too kind of emotionally upsetting. I missed it too much. So I myself had to take a distance from it in order to kind of focus on other activities and eventually then return to feeling a sense of connection. So especially when you see injury uh, or students have an abrupt ending to the sport, they may need some sort of a distance before they can return or feel connected to the sport. Again, because it may be either too traumatic or too emotionally upsetting to have the reminder of what they may have lost. Sorry about that. Okay. So with that too, we can all work as a team. And again, so in this panel alone, we have school counselors and mental health counselors, and we all kind of address and work with athletes at various levels. But the best is I think to help this population is building a sense of team. Again, a lot of athletes are used to having much social support, whether it be other teammates, coaches, athletic staff, such as sports medicine staff, like athletic trainers, or even doctors, or even athletic administrators. So depending on the sport, they may be used to having a strong sense of support. And with that, as school counselors, we can work to build other connections to help these athletes with developing skills once they no longer compete. So we can get family involved have them start exploring career options or be a support during this transition. We can build connections with coaches. So we can have coaches kind of preparing students for the next phases of life. Teachers, same idea. And it can also be beneficial because a lot of sports have a strong peer support group, get other peers involved in talking about the future, the next steps of once I'm no longer competing. So if we get teammates and maybe even leaders on those sports teams to kind of talk about these topics, there may be more buy-in from our student athletes. In addition, we can get community members, whether that be alumni of the school or even uh, possibly assistants at the next stages, such as colleges or maybe even some uh, professional or semi-professional sports teams. The, the creativity is limitless on what community members can get involved to again, be another source of support for our student athletes as they enter post competition. And finally, we can promote more collaboration with other professionals, whether it be career professionals, such as career counselors, again, mental health professionals, because there's gonna be some students with this transition, we may see mental health concerns, especially if that transition had to be very abrupt whether it's a suspension, getting cut from a team, 
or an injury that no longer allows them to compete. So that could be beneficial to have already relationships with professionals in the community who can, can be a resource for those student athletes. In addition to healthcare, whether it be um, PT, occupational therapy, athletic training, uh, for, uh, physicians, family, doctors, et cetera, just building these connections with having the students have a sense of resource and plan to kind of make that transition easier. So with that, is there anything that the two that we want to add as panelists to any other closing thoughts before we end? Yeah, I just want to say thanks y'all for your time and for being here with us today. And I know like as school counselors, we're always like the center of that team player mentality. So really just being creative with our resources, what we use um, and understanding that identity is so transformational. We all see that every day in school. And so just keep on doing what y'all are doing and thanks. Well, I think you're muted, <laughs> Every time on Zoom. Zoom. <laughs> uh, I just want to say thank you as well for, for, uh, for listening and joining us for this presentation. Um, I think that the athletic population in, in schools, sometimes, you know, my experience being a counselor working with athletes, sometimes they're the, uh, they're, we, we hold a lot of perspectives on athletes, on what athletic departments are, on maybe athletic staff, coaches, and also just hopefully this presentation helped you kind of as a reminder that, you know, athletes struggle as well. And there's some unique things they go through too. And there's ways that we can support them as well as counselors. So thank you. Yeah, and, and I want to thank everyone as well. And just add with a closing nugget too, that still remember with athletes, there's, there's a, there can be a sense of culture where just talking about mental health, um, it can still have the, that strong stigma with it. So I feel the earlier we kind of have students prepare for this, maybe we can help decrease that stigma. So with that in closing remarks, I thank you all for participating. If you ever feel free to reach out to any of us. I believe our contact information is in those bios. And again, thank you so much for tuning in and hope you have a good rest of your day. And we're going to, um, thank you as I try to find the end button. <laughs> thank you.